With due respect, I think it is shameful that I, as a competitor to President Trump in this race, have to ask questions that the media isn't asking. The job of the political media, if it has one job, is to hold the U.S. government accountable. It reeks of politicization, which is why I want to go back to the top question that the media actually should be asking. What did Biden tell Garland? What did Garland tell Jack Smith? That's what you need to begin to the the bottom of. Former President Trump's own 2024 primary challenger confronting the media over recent coverage of Trump's indictment. Fox News contributor Joe Concha joins me now. Joe, it is rare for presidential candidates to defend the person they're running against, but that is what's happening here. Yes, not just with Vivek Ramaswamy, but we see it with Ron DeSantis, we see it with Tim Scott, we see it down the line, all making the same pragmatic argument that this indictment and these indictments, we, we should say, when we talk about Alvin Bragg and we talk about Jack Smith, we talk about these cases, is the weaponization of the Justice Department to take out a political opponent during a presidential campaign. You could talk about what's in those indictments and how they could be troublesome for Donald Trump, but the timing is one thing, and then the fact that there are rules for T, as in Trump, and not for B, as in Biden, or C, as in Clinton, as far as them doing the same thing that Donald Trump did as far as classified documents are concerned, and then having them in their possession in various places, uh, particularly with Hillary Clinton, where they were actually accessed by foreign adversaries and no charges were made. It's a great argument that Vivek Ramaswamy is making, Carly, and and make no mistake, by the way, no one's run a better case campaign during this presidential primary season than Vivek Ramaswamy. And that's how you say his first name, by the way. It rhymes with toothache. It's Vivek, not Vivek. And I can't wait to see him on a debate stage. And look, this election, I'll leave it here, is shaping up exactly the way Joe Biden and the Democratic Party wanted to in terms of media coverage. All the focus on Donald Trump, and not his policies when it comes to trade or immigration, border security, taxes, foreign policy, education, but his legal troubles. And zero focus on Joe Biden's record when it comes to inflation, wages not keeping up with inflation, crime, education, the border, Taiwan, China, Russia, Ukraine. You could go down the list. Joe Biden is polling horribly on all of those fronts, but we're not talking about him, are we? Mm. If you watch the Sunday talk shows and all weekend, it was all about Donald Trump and not about the issues, but yeah. about these legal cases. And that's the way it's going to be through 2024, Carly. Well, let's keep on talking about what's going on on the Sunday talk shows because Senator Lindsey Graham did some TV yesterday and he clashed with George Stephanopoulos. Listen to this. And when an investigation Senator, is had about your activity, no, let me finish. But you this didn't answer the you question. That was ridiculous. Well, yeah, I, I'm trying to answer the question from a Republican point of view. That may not be acceptable on this show. And the senator went on to say the former president may have done something wrong, but there's a two-tiered system of justice and espionage uh, charges are ridiculous. So really what Republicans are doing, they keep on talking about the two-tiered system of justice, how Republicans aren't treated differently than Democrats. They're not talking about the merits of this case, though. So is that a strong enough defense? You have to wonder. I mean, we'll have to see as this process goes on if— There is a really a there there as far as what the indictment says and what Donald Trump actually did. So at this point, Lindsey Graham could only push back on a George Stephanopoulos, who was only the communications director uh, and a chief strategist in the Clinton administration, now is somehow a chief anchor at ABC News, who's supposed to be nonpartisan, if you want to believe that. So it's, it's the only defense at this point. The question is, will the American people care? Or will they say, you know what, we got real problems at home here as far as X, Y, Z, and why aren't we talking about that? I I think that's more the problem here, that we're not talking about the things that affect the American people. Instead, it's all the political theater that's going to go on now for the next, whatever it is now, 18 months. Yeah, and it is true that an indictment is a one-sided document, and now it's up to Trump's lawyers to defend him. It looks like that defense is going to come in the form of the Presidential Records Act. Certainly more to come on that front. In the meantime, though, Joe, uh, the Soros family is making news. George Soros' son gave his first interview uh, since taking over his father's $25 billion empire. His name is Alex Soros, and he says, I'm more political than my father. As much as I would love to give money uh, to, to get money out of politics, as long as the other side is doing it, we have to do it, too. So should that give Republicans pause that he says he's even more political than his dad? 
Yeah. And when we talk about money, we're not talking about, hey, let's give a couple hundred dollars to this foundation or to this particular campaign. We're talking billions upon billions of dollars here. And if you, you know, if you watch the show Succession, this is it. You're actually seeing it in real time as far as George Soros uh, being way up there and now his son taking over. He's going to be more politically focused, more politically active. Uh, that's very bad news if you are against, you know, crime in general, because what George Soros Soros does, he puts people like Alvin Bragg and others into district attorney offices, and then they don't enforce the law in any way, shape, or form, where criminals are back out in the street over and over again like a revolving door, and police officers can work as hard as they want to. Yeah. As long as the Soros family is involved, you're going to have crime way high in cities from San Francisco to Chicago to New York because of this wretched family, and that's the only way you can describe them at this you point. You are right on the crime front. Alex Soros also said our side has to be better about being more patriotic and inclusive. Just because because someone votes Trump doesn't mean they're lost or racist. So at least that sounds a, a little reasonable. Joe, got to leave it there. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. Always great to see you. I'm glad to be here because Cork is here. Kevin, I mean, I don't know. He's usually a midnight guy. Did he? Did you stay up the entire night, Kevin, and then just decide to do this? Or how's it work with you? You're hilarious. I should have stayed up all night. I took a nap, but I'm good to go. Good to see you, my friend. Thanks, As Joe. always, thank You're you, like Joe. Kevin, thank take you. it away. Right, man. I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilme. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis.